Baptist history, but uh, really one of the, the finest and most fruitful soul winners uh, that American history has ever recorded. And his name is uh, John Vassar. Um, he was known, kind of known in history as Uncle John Vassar. And um, just tell you a little bit about him. He um, was, um, his family, uh, his, his, uh, his, his history was that uh, his family came from French Huguenot heritage. Um, about the beginning of the 18th century, about the early 1700s, they crossed the English Channel into Britain and lived there um, because of leaving France for persecution, uh, because of persecution, went to Britain and lived there for three or four generations. Um, that was where John's father was born. Um, they, um, they chafed under the continuous uh, church state um, you know, restrictions. Uh, Britain didn't like them either because they were of um, um, dissenter persuasion and they were really of Baptist persuasion. And um, so eventually uh, Tom Vassar, this would be John's father and his brothers came to, came to America. Uh, in a short time, um, his father was married and, and we're just gonna focus on their fourth child, John Vassar, who was born uh, to that, into that family on Ju uh, January 13th, 1813. And um, wealth was what, not one of their uh, attributes, I suppose. There are a lot of strong things in their family. Wealth is not one of them. So John was not provided with a very uh, long education. In fact, at the age of 12, he was employed in a brickyard uh, doing man's work. When he was 20, and I tell you this, this part of it just to, because it's important for the rest of his, his life, but when he was 20, he uh, suffered an accident. He was crossing a, kind of a crude log bridge and he, he fell between the logs, crushed his leg. Um, he survived, of course, but it was a crippling injury and he, and he walked with a limp the rest of his life. When John was 25, he was married. Um, he was still unsaved at this point. But a revival um, meeting was held in the, uh, the Baptist Church in Poughkeepsie, in Poughkeepsie there in New York. Uh, John would not go. Um, he, he was um, really living for the devil at that point. Uh, he was uh, working at a brewery. And, um, but one of his cousins offered to pay him to attend the meeting. So he went to the meeting to get paid. And, um, but he returned the second time without pay and, and came under great conviction. Um, he had not been really exceptionally wicked, but John Vassar saw himself as the very sinner who had caused the death of Christ. And uh, kind of reminded of uh, John Bunyan's uh, conviction before he was saved with uh, a similar, similar conviction. And uh, when he experienced salvation, John Vassar was a transformed man. Um, he just lived in continual amazement of, of the wonderful grace of God and, and this really set his whole life on fire for the Lord. Um, in April of that year, it's 1842, he, he joined the Poughkeepsie uh, Baptist Church. Uh, his pastor, Rufus Babcock, was uh, a good man and, a, and, a, and uh, took a lot of time with him, counseled him, guided the young convert. And uh, John Vassar became, as I said, one of the finest personal soul winners that American history has ever recorded. Um, he purposed in his heart, through personal witnessing, to bring as many people to Christ as he possibly could. And it's impossible to tell his whole story here. Um, uh, the American Tract Society has written a book on his, uh, on his life. Um, he called himself the shepherd's dog, referring to the Lord being the shepherd. And, and he was a very, I should, I, I'll use the word, he was just a strange man. He was, um, he was very unusual looking and acting. And, uh, and because of that, um, people knew who he was. He was... Um, um, I'll, I'll, I'll read something here. Dr. A.J. Gordon um, wrote um, about the shepherd's dog. Uh, he, he knew him. He said that to one who, who never met him, it would be quite impossible to describe the impression which he instantly made. He literally gave a shock the moment uh, that he, he reached out to, to shake, shake your hand. He gave one, um, sorry, there was such an intensity of zeal accompanied with such a magnetic manner that the impression was instantaneous and quite overwhelming. It was the lightning-like penetration of a, of a pity that was always charged to the highest pitch. Indeed, it was the first question that occurred to anyone. How could it be possible for a man to live in such a tense and highly wrought condition of religious fervor? Yet there was very little apparent variation of temperature. He traveled from Maine to Florida, from the Atlantic coast to the Pacific, on foot, on horseback, by rail, and by steamer, resting not in summer or winter, um, in the one intense eager pursuit of lost souls. And wherever you found him, there was the same burning zeal speaking out in his looks and in his words. Um, 
He, of course, lived during the time of the Civil War, and there's a couple interesting stories. But um, one time, um, well, I'll just read this. It said, before daylight, uh, this is um, uh, in that book that the American Tract Society wrote. Um, he, was, um, he was a Yankee, and they, he was marching with the, with the Union troops. And he, he purposely would, would go to the Union troops and march with them and live with them and the camps and that, just a witness to him. And uh, it said, one time before daylight, um, we were all tumbling out and falling into line. The columns were, the columns were pushing along the ar artillery rutted rows as, as if on a race toward the Pennsylvania hills. John was 50 years old or more, but he kept up with the best. He not only kept up, but he would often shoulder for a mile or two the gun or knapsack of some poor fellow ready to give out. We missed him um, before getting to Gettysburg, and weeks passed before our men again saw his face. After the fight was over, he became separated in some way from our troops, and he was captured by, Stewart's, uh, by Jeb Stewart's cavalry. Um, when brought into the presence of the general and questioned as a suspected spy, he instantly dissipated the suspicious general, uh, the, 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 the suspicions of the officers by his frank and fearless words from scripture. And he quickly turned to the general and said, I am working as a culpator of the American Tract Society to try and save the souls of the, bo the dear boys that fall around me daily. General, do you love Jesus? Now, uh, Stuart, who was not a Christian, he tried to deflect that and he said, uh, I know that good old society and I have no fear of its emissaries. And Vassar just buttonholed him and said, but General, do you love Jesus? You know, trying to get back to the subject. Uh, the puzzled uh, uh, general was relieved by the suggestion of some of his men, the men who had arrested John, and uh, uh, they had also come under his buttonholing, uh, his witnessing, and, and they said, General, take the man's promise that he will not tell of our whereabouts for 24 hours and let us see him out of our lines or we will have a prayer meeting from here to Richmond. Uh, and uh, I read a secular account that said the same thing about that just that, that at one time, you know, uh, that he was captured by Stuart's army. And uh, they said they quickly released him because of his, his prayers and his preaching. And uh, so there's how to get out of an uh, enemy, uh, enemy camp. Um, but um, the, uh, another time, just another little story, he was, he was going door to door in a town uh, as he was crossing the United States. Um, and he's going from house to house and distributing tracts and talking to people about their souls. And, and a woman um, who heard about this strange man uh, coming into town um, and what he was doing, she said, if he comes to my house, he will get the door slammed in his face. And without knowing what the woman had said, uh, he, uh, he the next day uh, happened to knock on her door. And when she saw that, that, that he was the man who had been described to her, she did. She slammed the door in his face. Vassar sat down on her doorstep, and he began to sing. He said, but drops of grief can ne'er repay the debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away. Tis all that I can do. That, that song made its way into the house. She heard him singing, and um, she was greatly convicted and uh, called out to him and, um, and went out, and he led her to the Lord. Just an, a, really an amazing man. And um, I was just thinking, you know, we have um, uh, Pastor Dameron has... Um, started the, uh, well, it's been a couple of years now, but the, uh, the, the Fisherman's Club, and, and with, the, with the sole idea of, and he tells us this, and he and he's said this to the church, was the idea of just being, just making it, us more aware of, of the opportunities we have to, to witness to people. And when I read, uh, read about a man like John Vassar, I think, who, who took every opportunity, it didn't matter if he was a prisoner of war, or if he was, had a limp that followed him the rest of his life, he had a painful limp that he couldn't walk, and yet he, he basically walked from the Atlantic coast to the Pacific coast and back again, and up and down New England, um, and that never stopped him. And how, how that would have been a great excuse for, for me, for sure, uh, many of us perhaps, and uh, he would not let, him, let, let that stop him. And so I want to thank the Lord for Uncle John Vassar and his tremendous witness um, for the Lord. All right.